So everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us again for our rescheduled um, training with ProQuest and Larry here. And we're so looking forward to sort of teaching you all about our database and how you could use this tool with your students and in your library program and share it um, with your teachers and your school. Um, take it away, Larry. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen quickly. And uh, again, if somebody just makes sure that I'm sharing properly, I can get started. Looks great. Okay, thank you. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Larry Wilkner. I'm a product manager at ProQuest. And um, this is the agenda I had planned for today. Basically, just start with an introduction to me and um, talk a little bit about the benefits of research databases and offer a brief history of SIRS, which has its origins in South Florida, uh, interestingly. And, and then go into uh, a demonstration of two of the SIRS products that your district subscribes to and has for several years, SIRS Discoverer. We'll do a quick overview and then a live demonstration and then same with SIRS Issues Researcher, overview and live demonstration. And then we'll open it up for Q&A. And at any point, if there's Q&A um, that you, you wanna ask right away, that's fine. Um, you know, I'm happy to, um, Maybe Stephanie can interrupt me and I'll, I'll be happy to address it at that point. Uh, so my name is Larry Wilkner. I am a product manager at ProQuest, as I mentioned, part of Clarivate now. Um, I'm based in South Florida. I've been uh, part of uh, ProQuest Clarivate since 1996. I actually started as a topic editor uh, for the SIRS product line back when it was both a print product, a CD-ROM product, and an online product. I work very closely with Eleanor Goldstein and Elliot Goldstein, who are the two founders of the company. So it has South Florida roots, and we've really had a commitment to keeping this the the integrity and the mission of the SIRS products alive, even as it's progressed into the digital age and now is part of ProQuest and Clarivate. So um, before we get started looking at SIRS, I just want to make sure we're all clear about the benefits of research databases generally. Uh, as I understand it, many of you are new to the district and so maybe new to using of databases, maybe not so, maybe you've used some in the past as part of your um, college work. But um, among the benefits of research databases is that they provide authoritative information. We use sources that are trusted, whether it be you know major national newspapers, magazines, scholarly journals in some cases, uh, they all get vetted by our team of editors with 10 to 15 or even more years of experience with backgrounds in journalism, uh, education, and even librarianship. Um, the content that we add is right, rights cleared for use in the classroom, which often you can't say about things you find on the open web. Uh, we have uh, a whole department that does nothing but secure rights to this content for inclusion in SIRS so that you can then share it with your students and they can put it in their uh, uh, outputs like PowerPoints or written materials. And you can have uh, the comfort of knowing that it's been cleared with the copyright holder. It's also a closed environment. So uh, again, we'll look more at SIRS in a minute, but it, this is 100% selected content um, and we maintain the integrity of it, ProQuest does. So we're not really, um, linking out to things, third-party websites in many cases where you, you know we can't really uh, supervise or monitor the content changes that might happen. So that should give you comfort and security in knowing that the content has been vetted uh, by ProQuest before it go finds its way into the database. We have a lot of tools to facilitate the research process. So we do things like give you the ability to translate content into multiple languages, you, if you're using Noodle tools, you can export citations to Noodle tools. We give you auto-generated citations. We even have text-to-speech capabilities or sharing to Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. So we try to make it easy to integrate this content into the workflow processes that you and your students are using at your schools. Um, this is also a great, databases are something that are, uh, 
and many of you may know this already, this is what's offered at the college level. For So for your college bound students, particularly those of you supporting high schools, this is giving them early exposure to the type of research materials they're gonna encounter in college and giving them a kind of a leg up and a head start in the research process and what's expected at the university level. So a little, real quick um, background on SIRS. SIRS was founded in 1973. It, uh, the, the acronym stands for Social Issues Resources Series. It was later shortened to SIRS and it was established by a high school educator, uh, Eleanor Goldstein, um, who uh, was responding to the lack of current information that she was finding in textbooks and even in the libraries of the day on the social issue questions that she wanted her students to grapple with. Um, and uh, she actually started this company as a, you know, three ring binder with, you know, mimeographed uh, um, articles from leading magazines and newspapers. Um, and her goal was to locate information, structure it in a meaningful way around topics and make it readily available uh, to, to really inf provide an informed open dialogue on issues impacting the US and the world. And you can see the first four volume titles were pollution, population, drugs, and energy. And of course, all of these are questions we still grapple with today. Um, and um, we're very proud of this uh, heritage and legacy. And of course, this being 2023, it's actually been 50 years that SIRS has been around structuring the study of, of um, social issues and helping novice researchers get started with you know, quality content. So again, just to give a wrap up here, over 40 volume titles by 1998, they were found in tens of thousands of schools and uh, those volume titles really serve to be a taxonomy for the study of, so, uh, of social issues. So let's turn to look at uh, some of the specific products because these are the ones that your district subscribes to now. Um, we'll start with SIRS Discoverer. Um, we, we, the tagline is where research starts. So these, uh, this is a database of selected magazine, newspaper and book content along with images, charts and graphics. The intended audience is really upper elementary, so fourth grade through roughly eighth grade. Uh, some high school students not yet proficient in English can also find this of interest because it's at a lower reading level, but high interest in terms of um, the content. We also have what are called topic pages. So in addition to selecting the articles, we also select topic pages. Uh, these are editor curated pages aligned to the most popular subjects for the most common assignments. And among those assignment areas that we focus on are biographies. We have a famous person um, topic page collection, controversial issues. So these are pro-con uh, argumentative essay type activities, usually more in the middle school area there they get assigned. We have information on countries, states, and provinces for country reports, state reports, and animals. Uh, so a taxonomy of animals with data that fits really well into uh, rubrics and that type of thing for the animal report or animal assignment often assigned in elementary level. The thing to know about Discover and really the whole SIRS portfolio is it's 100% full text. All the content has been lexiled, all the text content has been lexiled and it includes staff written summaries. So you don't have to read the whole article to know what it's about. Uh, there, there are summaries offered and we even have index terms that help with navigation. And then I mentioned those tools that databases are really good for, including text-to-speech, document translation, Google Drive, Google Classroom integration, and even integration with um, learning management systems like Moodle and Canvas. So I wanna jump from here into the product. So I'm just gonna back out of PowerPoint for a moment and transition to a demo. So um, I'm gonna go back to the browser and um, start here. So this is our homework central portal and I'm gonna jump into SIRS Discover. So again, the path that I'm following may be a little bit different from the one that you're gonna go through, through the district web pages, but this is what the, the landing page looks like. Um, 
So you see these topic pages that I referred to earlier that are organized under trending, editor's picks, or they're also organized into these four assignment areas. So animals, controversial issues, country, states, and provinces, or famous people. So th there's multiple ways you can navigate it. The trending obviously just shows what's hot right now, what people, what other students are clicking on. The editor's picks is an effort to just showcase uh, often overlooked um, topic pages. And then you can also choose by um, the, the assignment if you, if you prefer. Of course, a lot of students prefer to just do searches and you can just search if you prefer. I'm gonna do dinosaurs because that's an often a popular topic for students to search. Uh, you see you get articles um, returned and graphics. Uh, in fact, if you're just interested in, in images, there's a view all images toggle up here, which would allow you to uh, click on any of these images. Um, I'll click on this one just to get a sense of it. So this is uh, about feathers and how feathers relate to dinosaurs from an evolutionary standpoint. And you can see from here, you can click from the graphic to get to the article that it was associated with. So if you wanna read more about uh, this particular graphic and find more context, you can do that. Um, this is a rather short piece here. You can also translate. There's a ability to translate in multiple languages, up to 20 languages available here. These are on the fly translations. So they're not as good as a, a manual translation, but they're pretty good. They do give a good sense of the article. You have the Lexile score. You have the ability to save to the cloud, like I mentioned, uh, Google Drive and OneDrive. You can also um, generate a citation. You know, teachers often require citations for, for different projects to make sure the students are being responsible in, in where they source their information. And of course, print and email as well. In many cases, we, we will often have the original PDF uh, of the entire article, or in this case, it's a graphic. So sometimes it's easier to work with the PDF or if it's a longer book length uh, work, you can get the whole book and even download it for later viewing. I'll jump quickly back to the landing page and we'll look at some of the assignments. I know uh, biographies are often popular. So we have um, a growing list of biographies. They're organized by different categories. So if you wanted to just look at our human and civil rights leaders, you can click there. And then on any of these, it is organized in these, what are called topic pages, which again are written at a very simple level we provide a few biographical articles, um, a graphic, and um, and then usually a timeline of the person's life. Uh, you can also click for more articles on the individual. And so each one of these is, is organized along a similar fashion, regardless of which one you choose, you're gonna get more or less the same uh, type of materials. Um, you see Martin Luther King was trending, uh, not surprisingly given the holiday. Um, at any point you can navigate from here to get to one of the other categories like animals, for example. Um, I'll just pop into one of these so you get a real quick view of, of how these are structured. You can see they, they provide information on the animal, including habitat, behavior, how do they act in the wild? Where do you find them in the world? How many, what's their population? There's links to other articles as well as to other research topics on related animals. And again, an animal report is a very common assignment we hear about um, all over the country. Um, before we move on to SERS Issues Research, I want you to make you aware of the nonfiction book collection. There's uh, over 600 full text books that we have available. Uh, organized in, in these um, thematic categories. I'll click on environment. And um, we just recently added the DK Eyewitness books. So these are the entire book, fully available for you and your students. They're in uh, an accessible format. This one's taken a little long, long to load. Um, but it's available in both PDF and HTML. So HTML is good for the screen readers 
and the PDF is good for just getting the layout of of the of the article. Let me try refreshing this. See if we can get it to load a little faster. Okay, this one's just hanging up for some reason. Let me just try it again. I'll just go into the product. Maybe because I'm online, it's hanging a bit. Here we go. So I'll just go to environment and then climate change. I know this was loading earlier, but for some reason it was Let me try hurricanes and tornadoes. This is always the bane of anyone's existence in terms of presenting that things take a little longer to load than we like. But, um, well, I think I want to respect everyone's time. Oh, here we go. So the PDF will load in a minute. Um, you can see there are subject headings. I talk about how all of these are subject heading indexed. You can also read the summary. You can see the little repeating lines there just mean that the page is loading. Um, these are rather large books. There we go, Hurricane and Tornado. And you can scroll down. And as the page loads, you get a real sense of the visual appeal of these DK books. Um, again, you can download these. There's a save PDF option here. And if your student is using a screen reader or a, a, a ebook reader that accepts PDF, a lot of them do, you can have them upload it and read it that way. Um, there's also a text version. This is for accessibility. So if students using a screen reader or something like that or needs a little extra help, PDFs often don't uh, behave as well, but uh, the text version will work well for that. And um, so anyway, I won't belabor this, but I'll just say it's well worth your time to explore the nonfiction books here. We have over 600. We're adding more all the time, uh, mostly for that you know, upper elementary and middle school grades. So with that, let me go back to our PowerPoint and pick up with SIRS Issues Researcher, the other product that we want to talk about today. Like SIRS Discover, this is editorially selected content. So some of you who may have used databases in, at college or university may have been familiar with databases as something that is cover to cover. So every article from the New York Times, every article from The Economist, and there's certainly value in that. But with SIRS, We've actually, our editors have picked each article that's going into the product. And that can give you confidence, especially with the younger grades, that it's going to be age appropriate. As we know, a lot of magazines and newspapers include content where, you know, maybe you wouldn't want a student to read that because of some of the adult content being described or, or material. Um, with SIRS Issues Researcher, like SIRS Discover, our editors pick each article from leading publications. This is, you know, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, um, The New Yorker, um, The Economist, and on and on and on. Um, and um, it's primarily for the pro-con or argumentative essay assignment for middle and high school students. So again, if you have that kind of assignment at your school, you definitely want to let your teacher know about this resource if they're not already aware of it. Um, we have these curated leading issue pages, which are very similar to the curated pages that we just looked at and Discover, but instead they help structure the research for a student doing a pro-con type assignment and help them defend their position with evidence and um, references to those articles. As with Discover, all full text, graphics, photos, and charts, and all of the same tools that you have in Discover, so you don't have to relearn where everything is when you switch from discoverer to researcher, it's all going to be in the same place. So let's transition again to a live demo so you can um, check this out. So I'm going to go back to this 
portal page that we have set up and we'll jump into SERS Issues Researcher. And one of the things you'll notice right off the top is that the landing page has is very similar to what we saw in Discover. You have trending, you have editor's picks, and then you have this rubric or this taxonomy, I guess is a better word, for uh, structuring the study of the social issues, which really comes out of those binders that we looked at at the beginning, the, the, the original vision of Eleanor Goldstein, who founded the company back in 1973 with her husband. Um, so the trending is showing what's trending right now with our users. We have over 317 issues with more being added all the time. Um, you can get to a A to Z list. If you just wanted to get a teacher excited about this, you could direct them to this A to Z list and they can just scroll down and you can see it's almost like a, a Netflix type experience um, where you, you have this cover flow of these different issues and uh, students can, can be attracted by the visuals to explore more. If the visuals are distracting or you get tired of scrolling, you can also view a text-based A to Z list, which is a little easier on the eyes and, and a little faster to get through. Um, you can pick any of these and then explore further. Um, I'll just go back to the landing page and show you what, what a typical uh, page looks like. Let's look at mental health. So this is the structure for what we call the leading issue. There's a summary of how what this issue is about written by our staff. There's an essential question, does society's view of mental health issues prevent people from seeking help? And there's a viewpoint one and a viewpoint two with three articles selected by our editors, which they do strive to keep them updated. So the idea here is that um, the students can um, understand one, one possible approach to this question. We're not saying this is the only one, but it gives them something to work with. And then they get a viewpoint and then they get articles that will provide the arguments for that viewpoint, either viewpoint one or viewpoint two. We avoid the, root, the, the use of the term pro and con in this case, because some issues don't, don't uh, work too well in, with a pro con type framework. If you don't like the articles we give here, you, you also have the ability to search more within our database for other articles indexed under mental health. There's a, a research guide for the critical thinker, which opens up in a new uh, document, which I'll open up quickly here. So this is just a online rubric that the student can fill out as they're studying. And it helps them to kind of organize and, and really determine what their topic will be. Which topics are of interest to you? What is the purpose of your project? Who is your audience? And on and on and on, uh, including you know who's affected by this issue, what significant events have occurred, et cetera. And all of this information you can get from the leading issue uh, or even other sources that they might have available in the library, but it helps them to structure their information and gives them uh, a way to, to work towards completion. There's also other uh, critical questions to guide them. There's a um, uh, editorial cartoon for supporting visual literacy. You know, this could be a great classroom assignment to sort of, well, what is the message that this editorial cartoon is conveying? It may be obvious to us, but not to students. So it's a good learning opportunity. And then there's a timeline, um, which our editors uh, create and maintain. You know, a lot of students don't realize that these issues have uh, a history going back, in some cases, hundreds of years. So this allows them to, to um, explore. Anywhere you see a um, hyperlink, that will link to an article in, in SERS that allows them to explore deep, uh, more deeply. And as we go, you can see we do make an effort to keep this updated. Obviously, some topics like abortion are going to be updating a lot faster because it's a fast moving issue. Other topics, um, maybe not as, as quickly, but we do work hard to keep this updated and our editors are involved in, in, in that updating. It's part of the value of what we provide to districts like Palm Beach County. There's also um, the ability to, there's related issues, or you can work your way back on our breadcrumb trail here. So if you just wanted to go back a couple of levels and look at the drugs, 
health and wellness issues. You can see them here. Um, and it's sorted by trending. So these are the ones that are being clicked on the most at the moment. Uh, but you can also look at most uh, last updated uh, and uh, an A to Z list as well. Larry, I don't want to interrupt you, but I know Lisa um, can talk about this as well, as this is not something that elementary students have to worry about. This is not in their portal. Um, so this type of information and subject matter cannot be sort of, um, the elementary students cannot link into this and um, get this information in these articles. That's a great point, Stephanie. Thanks for bringing that up. This is definitely a high school product, uh, possibly middle school. Uh, depending on how you configure it, but uh, I, I believe we worked with the county and particularly your, is it the Clever uh, integration that we worked with um, yes. to restrict mm -hmm. access? That's another product that we uh, integrate with Clever. Um, so we're really very diligent about trying to to uh, secure that. We're also very close on getting Google single sign-on worked out. So stay tuned for details there. Uh, just quickly, here's where you would log in to link your account to save documents to your Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. Um, so if you had an article that you wanted to save, um, you, you can um, do that just quickly. Again, the layout of the article is very similar to what we saw in Discover. Here's your translate. Here's your text to speech over here. So if you want to, for those who need more auditory learners needing more support, they can click listen and even download the audio. And then you can save to cloud up here and you're given your options, Drive, Classroom, or Microsoft OneDrive. So I know we're pretty close on time. I'm going to switch back to my PowerPoint, open it up for questions, and also put your ProQuest account team's contact information up. And I'll be quiet and see what thoughts or questions may have come up in the intervening time. So this was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I definitely know that the high school um, media specialists definitely use um, SIRS a lot with their classes and integrating sort of the research and their presentations and the, um, the linking it to the Google account is fantastic. We, we practice with that with some of the um, English classes at one of our high schools. Um, remember that this is a tile in our district portal. It's for the students to use. Um, it is under sort of the umbrella of research. And then also they can search for the tile in their portal as well. Does anybody have any specific questions over these different um, databases that we went over today? I know as a quick sort of how-to guide, um, I'll send out the information and an email and Lisa will send sort of the video um, presentation here so you have it to go back to but does anybody have any specific questions that they would like to ask right now we have a quiet bunch today it's a lot to take in yes yes yeah <laughs> definitely and it's after the day after a holiday too so right right <laughs> But, um, you know, reach out to Chris or, you know, reach out to Stephanie and, and Lisa with your questions. They'll relay it back to us. And we try to be very responsive. And Yes, and you guys are great. Um, so, yeah, so please um, take the time to go through this resource. It is provided um, for the district for you and your students. If as you're playing with it, you're using it, your students are using it, you run into any issues or have any questions, like Larry said, please reach out to myself or Lisa and we'll get in touch um, with him or Chris. And if you guys do not have any other questions, we will end our session for today. Thank you so much for joining us and learning about this great resource.